Hey, everybody. Welcome to the Title IX podcast on the Cyclone Fanatic Podcast Network, the final episode. Where are we? Who are we? Where, what is this? What? This is April 1st, April Fool's. <laughs> But we're not joking. Oh, we're not. That's why this isn't posting until Tuesday. Right. We don't want to confuse the no, masses. We don't. We, because there's been a lot of rude stuff on social media today that's Has gotten there? everyone up and down. Yeah. I haven't been on social oh, media you should today. Hop on. It's actually Uh-oh. don't. It's a danger zone. Okay. See, I avoid this day. You Every should. year, I'm it's like, smart. I'm not even going on social media. No, oh, if a portal are... season to fall right on. I know. Oh. And there's lots of jokey jokesters out there yeah. that aren't jokey jokey I did, anyone. I, I will say at like 7.30 this morning, probably earlier than that, I posted fake macaron flavors. Okay, like, see, that's Stinky cute. cheeses right, right. and like durian. And... and that's one of those. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. But the whole so-and-so is in the portal. Right. Like, come on. Rude. So we are not joking. This is, in fact, the final episode. It is. And we, uh, before we started recording, we're talking about heartburn with Aiden. We were talking about how he forgot the snacks for our final episode yep. and he offered us his dinner which was packed in a cute little container. It was a little bento box. A little bento box, ham sandwich, a granola bar. Mm-hmm. Ham and cheese. Ham and cheese. <laughs> we didn't take it. We thought about it for a moment. I was tempted. Well, I we'll had go dried s- mango. We'll go snackless, I guess. Yeah. And Thanks, I see Aiden. Nobody brought us any... Oh, that's weird. ...like snacks or mm. gifts or anything. There's nothing Can I nothing take the uh, NBA Jam yeah. game as a um, parting gift? Yeah, I'm going to take yeah, you the Breeze Hall one pick. <laughs> We each get I want Brees Hall. We've got Brees Hall, Matt Thomas. There's a Brock Purdy jersey over there. Oh, you're wearing a 49er shirt. Wearing really a 49er. Yeah, I'm actually going to take Aiden's shoes. <laughs> that sucks. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> That's what you get for not bringing the snacks, buddy boy. I have to give away my child. <laughs> <laughs> Wait a second. Um, Ooh. Lisa. <gasps> yes. How do you feel? I feel. Good. Okay. Um, I'm looking forward to in two Mondays. I'm gonna do something exciting. TBD. TBD. <laughs> um, I know. Uh, <laughs> what I'm really looking forward to is that we got two interviews that people have been really trying to get. They're much sought after interviews, and we got them for our final episode. Oh yeah, we did. We did. Oh, I know what you're talking about now. Yeah. It took me a second. <laughs> Stuff. <laughs> okay, on. Lisa and I have been planning this for two weeks, and I <laughs> didn't catch on to what she was saying. So, yes, we yeah. got two great yep. interviews coming up. Mm-hmm. Um, and to be honest with you, we're not going to talk a lot about sports. Yeah. We're in our feels tonight. Yeah. Right? How are how are your feels? Uh, I, I feel good. I'm sad, but yeah. I feel like... This is where we're meant to be. So yeah, that's where I am. I think I'm. I'm looking forward to a lot of reflection. Yes, as am I. Mm-hmm. And um, I thought it was very fitting as we record tonight, Monday night. We are watching an incredible matchup between LSU and Iowa, and then a later um, in the evening matchup between um, USC and UCLA. And it's just this like monster night of women's basketball with probably the most watched game women's basketball game of all time so what a fitting night for us to record our final episode and for those of you who aren't watching steph is again dressed like kim mulkey (laughs) so (laughs) again (laughs) yeah and i'm dressed like lisa bluter i'm just like (laughs) i can't think of a more opposite thing that steph could have worn to be like (laughs) I look Kim more Mulkey. like uh, Don Staley than yes. Kim Mulkey. That's true. Night. No, I did see something with, where people were said like Ken all dressed up in the like bright stuff, and right. then I guess that there's another possibly a Ken, but dressed kind of like Carmen San Diego, <laughs> and that's Lisa Bluter. That's and I great. thought that was really funny. I'm actually wearing my together shirt, the Sue Bird. Oh, yeah. yeah. Um, and on the back, it says everyone watches women's sports. That's so a good one. Plan that puppy out. I like it. Um, do you want to start with thank yous? Because yeah. we have some thank yous to share. Yeah. Well, maybe we should have collaborated. I bet we, we should have a lot of the <laughs> We've same. decided we're no longer going to talk. And so we, <laughs> we did not we just, prepare. We, for we're this. starting now. We're starting now. This is This is the last time Elisa and I are ever going to speak. That's it. It's yeah. over. I'm actually not going to look at you for the rest <laughs> of the podcast. 
Oh boy. This could be a ride. Okay. I'm guessing we have a lot of the same thing. Yes. So we should just like ping pong this bad boy. Okay. I think we have to thank Chris first. Yes. Because without him, we wouldn't be here. Most yeah. likely. I mean, maybe in some weird parallel universe, we would have found each other, but probably not. Yeah. And so the story is, is that as I, the story, as the goes, story goes, I invited myself along to a meeting. That, you? Yeah. Surprising. No. Shocking. Um, that our marketing director at the event center was having with Chris because I had kind of started to play with recording podcasts but I hadn't really gotten them live yet and I just I had an interest in it and so I invited myself along uh, and we were going to talk to him about us doing a podcast at the event center and just a lot of other things um, advertising with Cyclone Fanatic and stuff like that and so then of course uh, Adam our marketing director great wingman was <laughs> like Alisa you know wants to get into sports podcasting and Chris was like well you don't happen to be an Iowa State fan do you and I was like die hard let me tell yeah. you and he's like I got a girl and he's like I think it could be a good pair mm -hmm. and I was like okay and then we met we had lunch we went to scenic route we sure did and great food yes always and we were like immediately friends yeah it was like we'd known each other for yeah. a long time chris is quite the matchmaker it's true yeah and he uh just kind of gave us the reins that said go and the rest is history yeah and we've we've been going we for almost five years has it been yes because it was the summer of 2019. wow i know i, I thought it was three and a half <laughs> <laughs> I mean, you're close. Yeah. Ish. Okay. But uh we appreciate him for handing us over this incredible platform and hopefully we left it better than we found it. Yeah. So um and Chris has also helped us find sponsors for the podcast. The Ivy College of Business has been our longtime sponsor of the podcast. Um, Dean Dave, David Spaulding has been a guest and um, has been wonderful to us. So just giant shout out to our friends at the Ivy College of Business. I will never see the Ivy College of Business and not think of this podcast and saying their name every couple of weeks. So yeah, um, kudos to them. Kudos to Hope Wood mm -hmm. for being another longtime sponsor of the podcast, a longtime friend of mine, a former law school classmate, and just an all around good human. And then the Mississippi River Distilling Company. I was going to say, oh, don't my forget gosh. them. I was just thinking about Elisa during um, pandemic times. Yeah. How you and I would use their bourbon as a baking tool. Yes. And we created a lot of cool stuff. We did. Yeah. yeah. Aside yeah. from just good bourbon. So yeah. they've all been amazing partners to us. And thank you to all of them. Yeah. Should Aiden? we say a sad thank you to Aiden? Yes. <laughs> Aiden. <laughs> So thanks. <laughs> You've been great. It's been fun. <laughs> it's been great. Seriously though, like thank you guys for Aww. letting me do this. Um Are I'm you a still crier, so I'm not gonna get too deep, but you yes, what? I'm a crier, so I'm not gonna get Are too you deep. really? No. I'm very much a crier. I am too. Oh man. Oh boy. Oh. Are we all gonna cry? Probably don't look at him. Just don't look. Aiden. Aiden. Just, Are you still gonna be our friend? Yes. Of course. That was a quick guess. <laughs> I believe it. I do too. I believe it. I've told Aiden this. Um, I think he's going to be a star. Of course. Yeah, I think Thank he you. already is a star, but yeah. I think Chris found a good one in you, buddy. <laughs> yes, definitely. Thanks. I would suggest to you, if you're open to suggestions, don't overwork yourself too to late. prove anything because you don't need to prove anything because you already have. You're great. Thank you. You're awesome. And you can prove yourself. In a manage with a manageable set workload. boundaries. Yes, set boundaries, and if people want to push those boundaries, pick and choose who those people are because not everyone is allowed. And to don't push forget to eat. Yeah, that's a big struggle. See, that's the thing. That's <sighs> the thing that was giving me flashbacks to Jared. And I mean, a thanks to Jared. He yeah, was our, he's on my list. Yeah, he was our producer for a long time. But yeah, would forget to eat, was living on energy drinks and stuff. And I think has since found more work-life balance. And he's found love. And has found love. <laughs> oh, so there's hope Jer for everyone. Bear. <laughs> if Jer Bear can find love, anybody can. <laughs> oh. He knows I'm kidding. Yeah. Find love. Yeah. No, but seriously, um, 
So Jared, thanks. He spent a lot of evenings with us recording the podcast. Um, Jackie, Todd, Brett, Scoots, Mm -hmm. Connor, um, all of the (laughs) Cyclone Fanatic staff who has uh, supported us and and shared the word about the podcast. We are grateful. Yeah. And go ahead. Sorry. We we don't want to thank Todd and Brett, though. Oh, you're right. I meant to say forget you two. Just in case they think. Remember when they tried to to steal our content? Yeah, that's why. (sighs) But actually, thanks, guys. Thanks, guys. It was a fun rivalry. It while was. It lasted. Yes. Um, we've had amazing support from the Iowa State coaches, mm-hmm. um, coaching staffs, and players. Shout out to all the players and coaching uh, coaches who hopped on with us and gave us their time. Um, and I think you probably echo this one. A kudos to our families mm-hmm. for giving us the uh, freedom and space and encouragement to go do this every couple of weeks. And I know we sit down here and we record for 45 minutes, an hour or whatever, but it takes a lot of time to prep. It takes time to come out here. And when you're a mom of two little kids and have your own business or work full time or all of the above, that's significant. So thanks to our families for being okay for us scooting out here every couple of weeks. And also part of this is like putting ourselves out there to oh my gosh, yeah. people who are going to put us down. Mm-hmm. And that's hard for a spouse to hear mm-hmm. people. And I think that both of our husbands handled that well. And I think, I mean, and we, friends too. Yeah. I mean, we had a lot of friends come to bat for yeah. us too. True. Yeah. Um, and then to the listeners, we have some amazing super fan listeners who I think have listened to every single episode, which yeah. is unreal to me. Like even my favorite podcast, I don't listen to every single yeah. episode. So that's incredible. We have a lot of casual listeners who have popped in and out over the years and have made this a success. And um, when I was thinking about this, I think we changed some people's minds. So to everyone who listened with an open mind and was willing to come in that way and have that attitude, huge thank you to yeah. you because that's why we did it. Um, and then I just want to thank you, Alisa, for being an amazing partner and friend along the way. And we've learned a lot about each other, a lot about each other's lives and families and all of the above. Yeah. Um, and just for giving this a a life, I guess. And through this podcast, I've met some of my very best friends. I've met people who have now become a regular part of my life. I've met people who have given me opportunities, both personally and professionally, that I wouldn't have had any other way. And you've helped me grow this incredible platform. And to the people who have embraced what I've decided to do when I decided it was no longer going to be just sticking to sports, thank you to you as well, because that was a step out of my comfort zone. And I wouldn't have been able to do that without you, without Cyclone Fanatic, without this. And I think back and I think about how much more fulfilled my life is now because of that platform of listeners, of Twitter followers, of fan, of fellow fans. I'm just, I'm forever grateful. I think about what you were talking about listeners and we have listeners who became good friends. Yes. Great friends. Yes. You know, we had a little girl gang for a while yes. that was getting dinner together. Yes. Um, we have people that we meet up with at tailgates intentionally. You know, we have people who swing by our tailgates intentionally. Um, and we've we've created kind of like a, a culture, a, a little community. Bit. Yeah. 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 And yeah, I'm super grateful for it. And exactly the sentiments that you said, like I'm in a different place now than I was, as you say, almost five years ago. <laughs> Where has that time gone? <laughs> Damn flies when you're having fun, sister. <laughs> but yeah, it's 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 changed my life for the better. And I can only I can only assume that this background as uh as have all of the things that I've done in my life. Yes. Um enriched something in the future. That's right. So I know that, you know, this is going to stick with me and whether it is people or, you know, skills that I learned along the way, something's going to pop up in the future and it's going to make me better at another thing. And I think about too, how, you know, like tonight at my daughter's softball practice, someone stopped me and said, Hey, you don't know me, but I know you. And (laughs) it was one of those, I, I mean, countless interactions like that. And how many of those have resulted in friendships or a connection with someone to someone I work with. And I just, I'm so grateful for how small the world is and how much smaller it's gotten because of this. Yeah. Yeah, definitely. That's funny. There was a guy in softball last year, the like running, I don't know, the books or something. And 
he said Alyssa, and I said, "Oh, Alyssa," and he said, "Wait, should, people he, pronounce your name right?" <laughs> I know. And he goes, and I don't usually correct them, so that you don't, but I, know, I do. I know. So I said, "Oh, Alyssa," and he said, "Oh, I should know that I listen to your podcast," and I was like, "Oh, okay." It's weird. Yeah, it's the best though. You, you never know. Yeah, and I hope people continue to do that. Yeah, I love meeting people, and like I said, that's been the biggest blessing out of all of this is just that community we have. Definitely. Well, should we get to our um, yeah. highly sought off, sought after interviews? Yeah, these interviews, you guys. Do you want to tell the world who we're interviewing? People have been asking me to interview this person. <laughs> Does Aiden even almost, know? I was just going to say, do you want to tell the producer maybe? <laughs> for almost five years, they've been asking. Is it William Hung? <laughs> it is. <laughs> Steph William Hung. Copley. How do you know that was my middle <laughs> name? I've never told you that. <laughs> oh, so Steph. Okay, just to to give everyone a little, we decided. Wait, is it actually William Hung? No, <laughs> <laughs> I said Steph William Hung Copley, as if that was her let's middle bring, name. Let's bring let's bring William <laughs> Hung in via. Yeah, he's via actually Skype. here. Well. I've gotten a lot of cameos from William Hung that's over there. Yeah, that's true. He's a he, we're a, we're fans. Chris, <laughs> he's a Cyclone fanatic yes, regular. He is. Um. So no, it's we're interviewing each other, Aiden. <laughs> Keep up, buddy boy. That's a great idea. Good work, guys. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> because we thought that would be the perfect way to sign off. So Elise is going to interview me, and then I'm going to interview her. And she has a box. It's a prop, and I need to know what's in the box. <laughs> so I don't know when that's coming, but. <laughs> I'm a little terrified. Mm, All right. You should be. So I'm Steph. in the hot seat. So Steph. Elisa. So I listen to another podcast called Los Culturistas, one of my favorite podcasts. Okay. And they always say, what was the moment in culture that you knew culture was for you? And so I want to ask you, what oh. is the moment in sports where you knew sports were for Ooh, you? Ooh, that is a great question. Thank you. And... <laughs> What a terrible way to answer a question. I just did one of my pet peeves. <laughs> oh, no, I think that's a good, that's good. Okay. It bides you a little time. It does. And it's true. It's I a did great not question. send her these questions. No, 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 we didn't. We did not. No. Cause we don't speak to each other anymore. We've established this. Uh, I, it's a culmination of a couple of events. It was the 1996 Olympic games with the, all the, uh, what do they call it? The, the fab. No, five. fantastic. Seven, the, the seven, right? You know what I'm talking about. Yeah, you about. mean it wasn't Michigan? No, That's the U.S. I do know what oh, you're talking okay, about. okay, yes. Okay. Why can't I think of it right now? Aiden, look it up. 1996, what do they call them? But like Carrie Strong, yeah. uh, Strug, that, yeah. that group of gymnasts. And at that same time, my hometown, Carol, the Carol Tigerettes at the time. Ugh, mm. just pains me to say Tigerettes. Yes. But the Tigerettes won the state tournament in basketball. And it was just this moment where I was like, for the first time in my life, I saw a badass female athletes on the center stage, both locally and nationally. And I was like, this is for me. <laughs> this is mine. And that was it. That was when I knew. That was Magnific it. Magnificent. Seven. seven. Magnific okay. I think that's will you just name. Right? Yeah. Will you name the gymnast? Shannon Miller, Dominique. Yes. Mochiano. Mochiano. Good. Uh, Dominique Dawes. Mm -hmm. Carrie Strug, Amy Chow, Amanda Borden, and JC Phelps. Okay, thank you. Yeah. I, I wondered, we've talked about this. I wondered if you were going to bring up your dad is mm -hmm. a Yankees yes. fan. Yep. Am I right? Yes. So did that, the Yankee they thing? They also won the World Series in 1996, okay. same time. Okay. But it, I, so for sure, that contributed to it too. But I think even leading up to that, it was like, I, I vividly remember the women's sports part of it. Okay. Yeah. How, how do sports happen in your family? Like, um, do you guys always watch sports when you go to your parents' house? Yes. Like that type of thing? In my core family now, the four of us, yes. sports are always on TV. Yes. Like the girls come home and they're like, what's on, what, what basketball game can we watch tonight? To the point where I'm like, they're, I'm so sorry. We're about to enter the dead zone of sports <laughs> oh, yeah. and I'm just terrified of it. But growing up, it was the same. I mean, it was the NFL every Sunday. We watched actually, my dad and I watched the NBA when I was a little kid, like when the magic were, yeah, you know, the, ma the magic yeah. of the nineties. And so it's just always been on as background noise. And then you know, um, in moments when we could sit and focus, that's, we didn't watch movies. We, as a family, we watch sports. Okay. Yeah. And I know that it is, it's important for you. You enjoy, I will say watching sports with your girls. Yes. 
I want to know, though, how important is it to you that in the future they play in love sports? It, or is it Ooh, important to you? Playing less. I hope they play as long as they enjoy it. I mean, selfishly, I would love for them to play throughout high school, whatever. I, more so, though, it's important for them to enjoy it because it's such a pivotal part of my family and what I love. And I would, I just think my, some of my best memories with my dad, especially are sports related. And I would love to be able to share that with them. And what is a, a sports team as the years have gone by, you know, I don't know. I mentioned the Yankees, yeah. they could come up. What's a sports team that, or, or a player that you've given up on over oh. the years? Oh, it's actually Major League Baseball. Okay. Yeah. And you know this because I've talked about this before, yeah. but just as a whole, I baseball was like my blood growing up. That is what I, I mean, I knew every player, I knew their histories and their backgrounds. And I didn't even know opening day was opening day this year. Really? Yeah. And it broke my heart a little. Yeah. And the uh, 2016 Cubs and 2015 Cubs too. I thought that storyline of that youth and that team, and I thought that would bring me back. And it did for those two seasons. And then I was just lost it again. Yeah. Do you I, see yourself going back to it? I hope so. Do you, then this is a, a planned question that I had, but do you think some of that has to do with there not really being a women's version of that? That could be. Do you miss that aspect? I've never, I've never in, uh, consciously thought that. And I just love, like, I love baseball. Mm -hmm. um, so I don't know. I think it's more just everything else seems to be growing. And baseball, Major League Baseball seems to just be stuck. Yeah. Like they haven't quite figured out how to be relevant. Do you think you could change that? <laughs> I don't know. You could go in there and... <laughs> it just feels like that's part of what is so romantic about baseball is it's the way it always was. Yeah. But it's kind of gotten stale. Yeah. We had a problem where we couldn't find the Cardinals game because blackout it was rules. blacked out. Mm -hmm. And it's that like, sure as shit isn't helping. Yeah. 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 That's and ridiculous. That's maybe part of it is they can't get out of their own way either. I don't know. Yeah. It just everything else is moving forward. And that just feels like it's stuck. And that was part of what made it so great for so long. But then it like flipped to the other side. Mm. I don't know. Yeah. yeah. The traditions were yes. great. And now, until they weren't. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Interesting. How do you feel about baseball? Um, I love watching baseball. And actually, we kind of had a moment last night where we've been watching basketball, basketball, basketball. I mean, mm -hmm. we watch NBA. We watch, you know, women's, men's. If there's high school on, we watch that. It, we're a basketball family. Yes. Um, and the kids just don't really care that much about watching. They love watching live. They do not care that much about watching TV. In They general. like being there, but not. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. And they just haven't quite caught on to the rules and stuff like that. And so uh, we had a baseball game on yesterday. It was the Cardinals game that we got on yesterday. And Malcolm goes, is this baseball? And we're like, yeah. He goes, I love baseball. <laughs> Out and of we nowhere. Like, what? And he like he played last ball yeah. last year, which is one base. He hit the ball one base. And he enjoys hitting the ball off the tee and stuff like that. But – he sat there and just watched the game quietly. You might have I flipped know. the switch. And I was like, okay. And that's actually funny too, because I went out uh, one of the warm days this weekend, probably Saturday, and I got my bat out of my uh, trunk and I have this like net set up with yeah. a tee that I can hit into. Yeah. And so Malcolm and I went outside and he was playing with his toys and I get this bat out and there are some guys next door working on the house and they like made a comment about me hitting them with the bat. It wasn't me, you know. And I was like, good one. And then <laughs> <laughs> and then I take a swing and they they, they all shut up real quick. You know, huh? They go, Oh, we thought your son was mm. going to hit the ball. And I was like, Well, he can, but he doesn't want to. I want to. So that was kind of a moment there where they were like, Wait, what about the the male that's in the backyard. Isn't he going to hit the ball? And did you say, I am here to extend my <laughs> softball playing career, pals? I said, I think I said, this bat's a little big for him, but he can if he wants. <laughs> anyway. Anyway. Back to, back to you. Back what, to me. Back to you. You see what I did there? Yeah. I turned, I you turned did. the tables. You turned the, you turned the tables. Oh, how the turn Ta tables. Turn tables. Uh, <laughs> So we've, we've had a lot of hot takes. 
We never on this have podcast. Hot takes. This a lot is a of hot very takes. Calm, unopinionated <laughs> podcast. But I want to know what a hot take that you have about sports in general that people might be surprised to hear. Mm-hmm. There has to be one in there. I know you have hot takes about you know certain players and stuff like that. You have political hot takes, all that. But is there one? I do have one. Okay. I don't think the WNBA is going to explode like we hope it will. Oh, mm-hmm. I don't. I think that women's college basketball is going to continue to explode. And I think the WNBA is going to say, stay stagnant. Do you have a reason why you think that? I, show me your work. Yeah, show, show me your work. <laughs> Uh, what a terrible thing to say to a kid, by the way, show me your work. It was like instantly made me <laughs> right, sweat as a kid. Right. Um, only because, well, a few reasons. Um, we've watched star collegiate players transition into the WNBA and continue to be dominant and continue to be forces and future hall of famers. Mm-hmm. But the viewership did not follow them into yeah. the WNBA. Sabrina Ines, yes. you, Yeah. You could go down the list. Yeah. I think the test is going to be Caitlin Clark. And um, if the eyeballs follow her, then I think I'm wrong because I think the Caitlin Clark legacy of players that are, you know, like the Juju Watkins, I think if she, if Caitlin gl- goes and the eyeballs go with her, they're going to go with other players as well. But I just don't think that's going to happen. I hope I'm wrong. I really hope I'm wrong. But we've not seen the trajectory of every other women's sport has just been through the roof and it's not been that way. for yeah. It's grown, but not at the same rate. Yeah. So that actually leads me into my next question. What has been the most exciting change that you've seen in women's sports in the past five years since we've been doing? Yeah, I have three and a half written here. Uh, I have been blown away how week after week we come in here with numbers that outdo themselves. I mean, it's been record breaking attendance and viewership literally every podcast that we've Mm -hmm. done, whether it's the National Women's Soccer League, women's basketball, softball, volleyball, it's everywhere. And it hasn't stopped. And I actually think it's only accelerated since we've done the podcast, since we started the podcast. So I am so excited about the growth and the the pace at which women's sports are growing. And I don't think there's an end in sight either. Okay, good. Because what what do you hope changes in the next three and a half years in sports? Five, Five years. years. Uh, I <laughs> This is the one thing. This We talked about heartburn before the podcast started. This is what gives me perpetual heartburn is that continually people undervalue the worth of women's sports. We just saw the NCAA renegotiate the rights for the women's basketball tournament. The women's basketball tournament is going to get more eyeballs, most likely than the men's, especially as we get deeper and deeper in the tournament. And they don't value it even close to the men. Still, despite this report um, from an independent third party a few years ago that said, Hey guys, you might want to reconsider this. They, when they renegotiated it, they did better but they could have done more. Yeah. And you see people like Angie and Chris Long for the um, Kansas City Current who invest their own money to build this beautiful stadium for women because they know people want to buy it. They see it as a good business decision, but there's not enough people like that yet. And I know they're coming, but it's still like this weird, I, it's still this, oh, that's we're doing that as charity. No, it's valuable. It's a good, smart business decision. And I want to see more people invest invest in women so my last question okay um somebody that you love ruth bader ginsburg said yes. at least i think she did <laughs> the internet told you the internet that. told me <laughs> um i hope you're about to say something ridiculous that <laughs> definitely is not ruth bader ginsburg um i can't think of anything off the top of my head that's ridiculous but what i think that she said is that somebody asked her what will it be? When will it be acceptable or when will mm. you be happy with <laughs> the amount of women that are oh, on, in the judiciary? In, yeah. In yeah. the Supreme Court. And she said, when there are more women than men. I think I believe, she might have even said like all nine or right. something. Yeah. So what do you, what do you think? What feels to you like? you will be happy when sports reach this. I want to see someone look at a league 
and recognize the point that you've made dozens of times on this podcast that women's sports are really new when you compare them to men's leagues. And I want someone to stop comparing apples to oranges. And I want to, I want people to compare them or treat them for what they are. And that means exactly what I just said. Start valuing them independently because that's what they deserve. And I know that women's swimming or women's track and field at the collegiate level is never going to make the kind of money that football does. Like I'm not, I, I know that, but start treating things like women's basketball, who is just getting insane amount of eyeballs for what it is. Start treating um, some of these professional softball leagues for what they are because collegiate uh, softball is growing. It's off the charts. And I think when I feel like that's what we're actually seeing and we're, we're not seeing these, Oh, but they don't get the same numbers. Well, of course they don't. Right. I think that's when I'll be happy. Okay. And I don't think it's ever going to be, well, maybe I don't think in our lifetimes, it's ever going to be like a 50, 50 split just because it's going to take time. But so for my lifetime, that's, that's when I'll be happy. Okay. I love that. Okay. And that's right. it. That's it. That's Ladies and gentlemen. Steph Cop, please. <laughs> Do you want to take a break? Steph, Ruth Bader Ginsburg, Cop, please. <laughs> William Hung, Ruth Bader Ginsburg. <laughs> WHRBG, Cop, please. Yeah, let's take a break and thank our sponsors. Okay. Thanks, Aiden. You can do that for us. <laughs> Shout out Hope Wood. <laughs> Transfer portal season. Lots of heart attacks. It could go any day now. We really don't know. <laughs> These cyclones like to test you. <laughs> Amen. <laughs> Cardiac clones. Uh, I just recommended Hopewood to someone over the weekend, actually. Oh. And I said, you can find her at hopewoodjd.com and you can use the code word fanatic for $50 off. It just rolled off my tongue. I love it. But seriously, go to Hope. Mm-hmm. It's the last time I'm going to say it. But no, it's the last time I'm going to say it here. It's not the last time I'm going to say it. It's true. To people. That's true. Okay, my turn. Okay. And now I'm nervous because I feel like you've said all the good things. No, mine is a different tone. Okay. So this is great. Mine is more podcast focused with a few sprinkles of other things. All right. Um, If you had to describe the last three and a half slash five years (laughs) of our podcast to a stranger who didn't know anything about us, what would you tell them? I would tell them (laughs) organized chaos comes to mind. (laughs) Uh, <laughs> shenanigans, uh, shenanigans. Um, I think, <clears throat> oh, that's a good question. There's, I think that every podcast is a little bit different, mm-hmm. but in general, we just try and get on here. And what I said, when we first started doing this, we're talking about women's sports and we're women talking about sports. Yes. And so I think that we've done a good job of that. We've balanced, um, the interest in Iowa state stuff. We've balanced the interest in um, Iowa State women's basketball, women's softball, women's volleyball, women's tennis, women's golf. Like we've been, we we've, talked about it all. Yeah, we've run the gambit and we've tried to bring eyeballs to the women's sports, but also we get excited about sports in general. Yes. And so we've talked about the things that we have gotten excited about because it, it would be hypocritical for us to get on here and say, Oh, we only like women's sports. Yes. Because we don't accept people who say we only That's like right. men's sports. And it's interesting that you say this. I had a friend suggest to me to go back to our first episode and listen. And I did for part of it, not the whole thing. Um, but we <laughs> said at the very beginning, both of us said, we don't want to be pigeonhole, pigeonholed into, oh, this is the women's sports podcast. Yes. And yeah, that's exactly. That. So I think we did a good job of that. Good. Do you feel like we accomplished anything in the last three and a half slash five oh, years? Oh, I think that we... And if so, what? I do. I think, that, <laughs> I think that what's important is that we've really honed our own opinions. And not only have we honed our opinions, but we have done the research. Yes. To prepare for the pod that now back up the opinions that we have. And so now instead of just sort of screaming into a void our opinions, we have five years of these are facts that have happened, that have led us to these conclusions, that have shaped our opinions of sports. I mean, like we're we're sports fans and I 
would just dare someone to come up to us in a bar and ask us to prove it. No. <laughs> I would just dare them because I think <laughs> I think 5 years ago we probably would have just hit them. Oh, I'll still hit them. <laughs> but now it it would be more of a actually how about you prove it and start shooting questions at them that they can't answer. Do you remember that mansplaining episode we did? Oh. <laughs> Yes. One of the the examples was when someone asked you to prove it. Yeah. Yeah. Yep. Love that. Love that. Uh, how many times does and Maggie Espen Miller mug raw go through your head okay. in any given day? I was literally just gonna say that. What have we accomplished? Like <laughs> we have accomplished these amazing, great things, but also the most stupid things, the <laughs> dumbest, <sighs> most ridiculous. We said we were quitting, and what so many people said was more than anything, more, more than more any than other <laughs> thing, more than thank you, more than you did a good job. But what about the Christmas? Episode? What about the Christmas episode? Can you come back and do a holiday episode? <laughs> yeah. If Chris, uh, Aiden, would you produce a holiday episode for us? Yeah, yeah, hands down. Oh, okay, just gonna, right. now forget you ask Chris, Chris. You know what? Yeah. I'll take the reins on this. One. You're in charge anyway. <laughs> Let's be real. I love it. So answer the question: How many times in a day? Does Often, <laughs> and I mean, she transferred, and so, but also, like, I see her mom on Twitter oh my gosh. and stuff like that. And, and every so, time we hear that, like, the yeah. copy girls do not know the words to the actual song; they just yeah. sing. And Maggie Espen yeah. Miller McGraw. When she was on the team, I would say weekly, sure, or more, because you were hearing her name yeah. too. Yeah. Um, that Robert Goulet episode, the rendition led me to lose my voice, yes. which led me to an interview for the We Will board in which I didn't have a voice in which Brooke Johnson had to translate everything oh, I was saying. No. I just, it was the most ridiculous set of events and I'm so glad we did it. And I'll just, that's, yeah, that's a good one. I would say, well, let me ask you first. <laughs> What are you most, I know you said what we accomplished. Yeah. What are you most proud of out of this podcast? <laughs> is it the, is it the a, holiday episode? <laughs> I am pretty proud at the fact that I can take a song and rewrite the lyrics of it <laughs> in 45 minutes. You're a jerk, by the way. <laughs> I take days, not even exaggerating days to do this. Mine would probably be like, better. I'm just rolling in the, I'm rolling into the parking lot, still writing my song. That is not overblown. That I is know. what has happened in the past. But yeah, I'm proud of that. I mean, I'm proud of um I'm proud of being able to get on here and say what I have to say and have people disagree with me mm -hmm. and have it not ruin my day. Yes, well said. Because at the start of this, people would really get under my skin yeah. on Twitter, whatever. And I have just learned and hopefully in passing on to my children that those things can just happen. Yeah. And they don't and we can grab them and throw them away and they don't have to affect us and they don't have to be a part of our day they don't have to influence how we feel in any way we can ignore them we don't have to this is a hot take <laughs> you can block people who you don't agree with in fact i'm not opposed to you entirely curating oh yeah your social media right to be people that you agree with and i will tell you why because i have people in real life real life people that you can touch and see that disagree with me right? and that are my friends and that we can have a friendly discourse because I don't need social media trolls, people without pictures, people without the real name, people that I'm never going to meet. I don't need them in my space. I haven't invited them into my friend circle. So I don't need them to be in my social media circle. So I don't know what the question was, <laughs> but it was, what are you most proud of? And I think that's a good takeaway that you've learned how yeah. to be confident in your opinions and not let the 
you, I think you would still listen to someone if they had a point, but if someone's going to come at you for the sake of coming at right. you, you're like, no, thank you. Uh, and if it's on Twitter, I'm not going to. Sure. Right. It, uh, that's just, just not the right. Yeah, yeah. That's not how I receive. Right. If you want to become my friend. <clears throat> never. <laughs> uh, how, how shocked are you that you've never fallen out of the chair? <laughs> Are we sure? No, I have at the last place. I did at the last place. This place, my ASS <laughs> is is. We have like a really. What are these called? Like on a, you know, if you were on a bunk bed, like high, yeah, you have like the arms, <laughs> yeah, like keep I'm, you. I'm wedged in here. I'm not like when I stand up, the chair also comes <laughs> with me. <laughs> That's what you're taking home is the chair. I'm taking this freaking chair home with me. Uh, what? I, this is similar to one of the things you asked me, um, but I have a follow up to it. How do you feel about the way uh, women's sports are covered now? How do I feel? Do you think about we are it? in a good spot? Do you <laughs> think there's room for improvement? There have been so many times where I have been watching a women's game and the and it'll just be a random women's game. And it seems to me like the person interviewing the coaches, this is their very first time <laughs> doing it, and they have never spoken to another human before. Have you noticed that was especially bad in the Big 12 or ESPN Plus this year? Yes. Woo! I painful. Even that even with the men, some of the men's games. Right. But goodness gracious. Yeah. Um when I worked at the TV station, um there would be moments where we would be cutting some costs and hire <laughs> some straight out of some babies. Yeah. I would say still better. Yeah. Than yeah. those ESPN plus re reporters. Yeah. I'm going to push back on that a little bit. Those are students. So, Oh, I know. <laughs> Freshmen. <laughs> They're 17. Uh, at least one of them was, I think. Okay. Well that explains a little bit more. And that actually infuriates me more because those are not the people that you need to be putting on broadcasts, especially on women's broadcasts. We don't it, deserve. I agree with that. It felt very uh, immature is not the right word, but very well. No, it is the right word. I mean, it just felt like a not unprofessional. It's no, it's these broadcasts are making millions of dollars. They have the money to pay well, people or train some people but it, what other profession are you putting people if there's not a doctor out there and there's a there's a well, freshman in college an 18 year old and they're cutting somebody open i can understand putting students in that position to learn i really i get that i i would have loved an opportunity like that but you got to give them like you got to make sure that they can string a sentence together or not read straight from a cue card or something like that. I just do not think that freshmen in, and there, are they shipping them off to these different places? No, they're all local. All Iowa state students. Yeah. Cause I it's all, just, it's a local, it's all here. It's pretty much all students. Yeah. That do ESPN plus production. Yeah. Why? Cause they save money that way. Why? And I appreciate that, that, that angers you more, but that's the oh, answer. Oh, that makes me so mad. Yeah. Why are we saving money on women's sports? Well, I mean, well, do you really want me to go into okay. that? No. <laughs> so then my follow-up to you is, do, is there a part of you that is worried about ending this podcast? No. Okay. No. I mean, like, for the sake of women's sports? Yeah, like locally. I mean, I don't mean, I don't think, you know the right. national talking heads are going to miss us. No. But, um, I mean, maybe they, maybe a friend of the pod, Holly will miss us. Yeah. Right? Holly Rowe. We love you. She Thank looks you. amazing tonight. Did you see her pink jacket? No, she's so cute. She's the best. I love her. Too. What was the question? <laughs> do I, what am I, am I afraid? Yeah. Like, do you have any concerns? Do I have concerns? Um, I mean, <laughs> if, if am I afraid people are going to regress to the mean? They can, I guess. I've done what I can. 
I've said what I wanted to say. Um, That's fair. I like that approach to it. Yeah. I mean, it's not my responsibility to See, educate people. I know. I struggle with this because in my mind, like, it's my responsibility. Right. I will shove it down your throat. Right. I The way that I kind of think about it is like, so my husband is black and it's not his responsibility to educate people on racism. Yeah. It just isn't. And does he, does he enjoy education? Yeah. He enjoys educating people about things related to minorities, things related to black culture. He enjoys that. Sure. And so I've taken this moment to enjoy it. That's a good but way to I look don't, at it. I don't feel responsible for Joe Schmo's <laughs> feelings on women's softball. I just don't. And if I should, I need to be better about that. <laughs> I know. I this just, is why I have heartburn. Yeah. <laughs> and I mean, I don't, I mean, I look at the women's basketball crowds. We have a legacy of amazing women's basketball mm-hmm. crowds. I don't think that I don't think that I'm moving the needle there. I think I've maybe moved the needle with a few people who were on the fence. Yeah, but okay, don't diminish that. To me that's very important. Okay. I I, I understand what you're saying. Yeah. I don't I don't it's just something maybe, I hadn't thought about. Okay. Well, that's why I asked you the yeah, question. I know. I don't want to give myself too credit, too much credit. All right. Because well, I say some real stupid stuff on here. That's what makes this fun. And I really made Aiden mad over there. Yeah, I just got to protect my cycle and CV people. That's mm-hmm. where I get my start. Well, that explains a lot. <laughs> I was just going to ask if you knew somebody, but you probably do. Anyway. I know um, a lot of people. <laughs> okay, big shot. <laughs> I know oh. Steph Copley and Lisa Woods. Oh, <laughs> about to be nobodies. About to be nobodies. <laughs> Um, okay. I know you have something up your sleeve. I do. Mm-hmm. I have, um, I have something, but I feel like you should end it. Okay. So can I mm-hmm. do my thing and then you do your thing? Yeah. Okay. Mm-hmm. I have a couple of final thoughts. I have a charge to our listeners. Are you already crying? No, I'm not crying. Okay. No, no, no. I don't think I'm going to cry. Okay. Um, I was you just, haven't heard what I have to say. Uh, I don't think I'm going to cry about what I'm going to say. Okay, okay. We are living in a landmark moment with respect to women's sports. I feel like it's a pivotal moment in women's sports where literally every single week, every single day, sometimes we are seeing attendance records, viewership records blown out of the water. We see people investing in women's sports, not because it's the right thing or the charitable thing to do, but because it's smart business and women's sports are profitable right now. And that's not some fantasy principle. It is fact. And I, it, people want to watch women's sports right now. They're not doing it because they have to, people want it. And my charge to our listeners, and this is a moment where you look into the camera and I can't do that because it's uncomfortable for me, um, is to not allow the narrative to stray from that. It's to keep people pushing the narrative. That's true. Keep people pushing the narrative, the the truth that people want to watch women's sports. And that entails things big and small, small things like calling people out when someone calls the cyclones, the lady cyclones, Mm. or when someone runs a story and tells Caitlin Clark, she needs to smile more. (laughs) And it's also big things like demanding equity, both in sports themselves and in how they're covered, both locally and nationally. Ask for women's voices. Ask for women's voices on Cyclone Fanatic. Ask for women's voices on Iowa Everywhere. Hold radio accountable. Hold local news accountable. Start asking out loud for women's voices because the only way those people are going to start listening is if you ask. And sometimes it's uncomfortable to buck the norm. And I appreciate that. But that's what we have to do. Otherwise, women's sports are always going to be second. And we deserve better. Love it. That's my charge. I feel so many of those things. Well, Steph. I brought a prop. (laughs) So scared. I promise I will still talk into the mic. Hold on. It matches your cup too. I saw your cup and I was like, Bleh. 
<clears throat> now, this song is a little lower than my range. So don't come after me. If this I is... love it when songs are out of your range. <clears throat> Good my title nine, though I may never see you again on Cyclone Fanatic. We'll be on the internet. Okay. <laughs> Please they look crawled at it. out of the woodwork and slid into our DMs. Some said they respect us. Others said they never would. <laughs> And it seems to me we lived our lives like we're screaming in the void, never knowing who is listening to our tirades. Our opinions will always reflect common sense and principles. Our platform ended long before our passions ever will. <laughs> that low note is real low. It seems to me we lived our lives like we're preaching to the choir, never knowing who really cares about women's basketball. <laughs> you got that Would've one. Would have liked to see them win a championship. Our podcast ended just before we won the tournament. Now there's like a musical leg. The interlude? Yep. <laughs> Hold on. I got to figure out how this starts again. I have a question. All the Monday nights through a worldwide pandemic, recording in our basement, <laughs> sharing thoughts on women's rights. People heard our plea. To fund women too, and we saw the tide turn in women's soccer and basketball. <laughs> and it seems to me the years we spent recording on this pod, seeing changes in March Madness and pro hockey leagues. And oh, three and a half years later, <laughs> shit, <laughs> things look different now. <laughs> Imagine what will happen in another 20 years. Goodbye, Title Nine. May we ever stay in your hearts as Cyclone fanatics who they gave a microphone. And it seems to me we spent our years watching sports and making jokes. I'm getting like more confident here <laughs> never caring what the men said when we struck a chord and our footsteps will always fall here along tailgates parking lots our podcast ended long before our fandom ever will our podcast ended long before our fandom ever will thank you elton john uh i have a couple of questions okay <laughs> go three three questions how long did that take you to write um i wrote it in the time between <laughs> chris or christmas in the time between easter brunch and when we left at like 4 30 <sighs> again i say you're a jerk <laughs> two did elton give you permission to um, use that song when you made him the cake was that part of the deal yeah okay yep uh third is that your microphone <laughs> <laughs> it is we have two of them and i wish that the i wish that the why do you have that <laughs> hello hello it's a what you tell hello hello it's Awesome. Have you considered a career in professional singing? I have, yeah. Okay. I did want to be yeah, Reba McIntyre. Oh. oh, okay. Oh, oh, oh what have you done? I don't know. Why does it sound okay. like a vacuum cleaner? I don't know. Okay. That means it's off. Um, I have. I wanted to be Reba McIntyre when I was little. Oh, you she have had Reba vibes. Yeah, thank you. That was amazing. Thank you. I, my cheeks yeah. actually hurt right now. That is something that I have improved upon in the last three and a half years Five. i know it was in the song it's, it was perfect it worked a lot it's more like four I and know. a half so okay. it yeah it's perfect Jeez, 
Um, can I give you some final parting yeah. words in the great, <laughs> from the great mind of our girl, Megan Rapino? Yes. This is her words from the ticker tape parade after the 2019 World Cup win, and then we'll sign off okay. for the last time. This is my charge to everyone. We have to be better. We have to love more, hate less. We got to listen more and talk less. We got to know this is everybody's responsibility. Every single person here, every single person who is not here, every single person who doesn't want to be here, every single person who agrees and doesn't agree. It's our responsibility to make this world a better place. And Elisa, I feel like in our tiny little neighborhood of the world, hopefully we did that. I think we did. Go Cyclones. Go State.